Hello, good evening, and welcome to A Craft Along with myself, Barbara Gray from Clarity here in the UK. And we're early to the party because we just want to make sure that everybody can find us. Um, hopefully, Paul, you're in the building uh, with our friends. Uh, if you could just let me know that the sound is good, Paul Church is going to keep us company as well. And if there's anybody here apart from me, do let me know, and then I'll, I'll, um, I'll know that I'm not alone. How is everybody? Is anybody there apart from me? Is it working? Oh, it was a little bit. Sound is all nice and clear. Thank you, Paul. So let's see if anybody's going to join us this evening before we start. Hmm? Have you got your cup of tea? Good evening. Hello there. Great to have your company. Come on in. One person's in. Yes. <laughs> and so it begins. Hello, come on in. Lovely to have your company. Um, this evening is the first of our craft alongs in quite a long time. We used to do these quite regularly during lockdown, didn't we? Hi from Illinois. Well, welcome. That's good to see. You're going to love this evening if you're in Illinois. What time is it over there then? Is that five hours or six hours huh? behind us? It must be afternoon, early afternoon where you are then, my friend. Come on in. Welcome to the craft along. And we're going to be focusing on stencils this evening. You know, because I've been preparing um, this evening, uh, I've been thinking, look, everywhere I look, this is really ridiculous. Uh, I had a real epiphany today because I've been focused on stencils, because that's what we're doing this evening. And uh, Colombia this weekend, well, hello, Ingrid. And Austria, Mensch, das ist doch toll. Isn't it lovely? There's, I mean, the internet isn't all bad, you know. It gives us the opportunity to all hang out on a Friday evening together, regardless of where we are in the world. Isn't that nice? Good evening, Paul. Any questions? Ask Paul. He knows the answers. Right, let's calm down and let's get going. Let people find us first. Yes, yeah, so I was having, while people are joining us, I was having quite a moment of clarity today because I realised that, you know, at Clarity, we've got all these different product strands, haven't we? We've got Clarity Stamps. Well, we know that. That was where it started. And then we've got the Groovy, parchment art and pergamano which is a huge part of our business now we've got stencils which actually came after the stamps which is what we're doing today we're going to have an evening around stencils and then we've also got the dyes which are very popular in the states as well as here but the states like and the states that our american friends they love our stencils we send so many of our stencils to America, which is quite interesting when one considers how many stencil companies there must be in the States. You know, they like our designs. And I think they like the quality too. So that's interesting, isn't it? Managed to find an internet connection here in sunny Dorset. Ken, you're on holiday. <laughs> Good man. Yeah, down on the Jurassic Coast, aren't you? Mm, you lucky boy. Anyway, so we've got these four product strands. Come on in, everybody. And the one that is probably least, uh, I wouldn't say popular, but say least exposed or the one that we shine a light on the least out of the four, the stamps, the stencils, the groovy and the dyes, I'm saying that it's probably the stencils. I, I feel that not that we neglect the stencils, but they're the ones that are not, not highlighted as much as the others, which is crazy. And then what was really fascinating, because I was thinking about that, and I thought, I wonder why. And then I started to realise in, in my own house, because I'm, I'm above the garage here, aren't I, in my little art studio. As I walked around, because my eyes were open and I was thinking about stencils, Almost every piece of artwork, you know, I've got that little gallery upstairs. Almost every piece of artwork is stencil work. Nearly every piece that's hanging on the wall is stencil art. Isn't that weird? 
I, I'm really surprised. And um, while we're waiting for everybody, I want to show you something. Because I thought, it's one thing saying it, it's another thing showing. I just I popped up to the loo. And as I came down the stairs, I thought, I'm going to show you. Let me just show you all the pictures on, on my wall, right, on the walls. Let me see if I can show you this. Because they're all stencils. Let me just show you if I come in really tight. Let's have a look. Right, so there's the magpies. That stencil, that's jelly art. Let me put my other glasses on. This will give people of give our friends a, a chance to find us. Then now that one, do you remember? I don't know, you won't remember this. This is a really cool one. And I did it with um, it's a gel press print in the background, and then I used a uh, grunge paste, texture paste. Look, see, and I did the 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 isn't that cool? Right, so, and then and there's a picket fence, look. And what I did was I scrunched, as I was, I dragged it through the stencil, the washing line, dragged the texture paste through the washing line and the bird and that, all in one pass over the top of the gel press print. And then when it was nearly dry, when it was nearly dry, I started bending it and contorting it. And so the, the, the texture paste had got a kind of a skin on it, if you understand. It was starting to set, it was starting to go off. And then um, I was able to move it. And, and then I took a, a tool and I started just um, putting little patterns in it. And then when it was dry, then I took a brush, voila, right? I took one of our stencil brushes and I dust over the top. And of course the brush, the black ink, archival black, it caught all the, the texture that I'd introduced into the, so that's on the wall. So I thought, look, see it's framed. That merited a place in the gallery. And then this one, this is pretty cool. This is another stencil. This, this is a design by Mel, our friend Mel Turner. And you can see it's in a little frame. Seven by seven stencil. Again, now that's done with texture paste too. It's cool, isn't it? All right. And then this one, again, texture paste. Oh, hang on. Moving too fast. Where's the texture paste one gone? Here it is. Right, there you go. Look, more texture paste. So this was one I did. Eckhart Tolle, it was a quote. Life is the dancer and you are the dance. And what I did here, I... I I put masking tape down like a triangle. And then, um, so there was only so much of the leafy swirl stencil exposed. And then again, I dragged texture. When I keep saying texture paste, I'm talking about this stuff, right? And then, and how do I drag it through? I use these, right? So this is what I use, it works beautifully, see? And then while it was wet, I put a little bit of a gold leaf on it. Yeah, arty, arty, arty. So that's framed as well. Um, is any, are you all getting in the building now? Right, so that was a nice one. That was done with golden open paints. That's just, I don't know. I don't think I could ever repeat it, but I liked it. And then that one is nice as well. That's got two stencils on it. Now, this is interesting. See the cog, cogs and wheels in the background? And then time and tide wait for no man over the top. It was an overlay. So here's another one that I actually I dug out. Um, well, I dug out. It's in, <laughs> in the house. I didn't have to dig it out too far. Let me just show you this one. Look, see? Isn't that cool? I'll show you on the other camera. This has got, you can see it now. That's using glass paint. See? Wipe back, add it on again. Yeah. Interesting, isn't it? So that there, that, that cogs and wheels stencil is in the background of that one, which is all inky. And it's just been run through a, a die cutting machine, which gives it, see how it's embossed? I don't know if you can see how it's embossed. Right, nice, eh? Right, again, worthy of a frame, I said. And then there's that one, the ABC, it's a gel press, big, big gel press print with a whole alphabet, that's a stencil. I've got any more to show you. Oh, that was a nice one, that was one of Annie's. That's just a beautiful girl with a background, Annie's one. And then that one's the Ocean Swirl, again, gel press. I just loved it. So that's in one of our bedrooms. And then that's another one from Annie. That's like the stamp that we're using today. See, the love stamp. Yeah, nice. So I just wanted to show you. 
you know, what is so strange? It's so I found it really interesting that the the product of, of all the product strands that we have, the core products that we have at Clarity, the one, the smallest, the most modest, the most unassuming one is the one that I, I frame the artwork all the time because I love it so much. It's very interesting, isn't it? So, so during the course of the evening, I'll tell you about our club as well. Because again, of the four clubs, the craft clubs, that's the, the not, I won't say least popular, but say the, the least subscribers. And um, to my mind, that's the one that I would join. If I only had one club, that would be the one. Isn't it funny? So there we are. Just saying. Anyway, look, here's a couple. Oh, here are a couple more. These are my wandering pieces. Shall I show you these and then we'll get going? This just gives everyone a chance to find us. These are cool. Look. <laughs> so this one, let me see if I, let me take my tea out of the way before we have a calamity. A calamity? Do you get it? Right. Camera number three, please. See that one? So that's a little bit of a moody job. So this is um, actually canvas board. It's done on canvas. And that's using the town stencil again. You know what I showed you before, but with the texture paste dragged through and then sanded back, right? So you, you can scratch it, see? And then I, I scratched the edge with a craft knife to expose the, the white. And then I put, I, I put paint on it and then I scratched it back and wiped it back. And that's how you get that really moody, look, London's burn in this one. See? And that's done with a uh, punchinella with white. And then this one, this one, this is very popular, this stencil actually. Um, this is the treescape stencil. You'll be familiar with the stamp and you'll probably be familiar with the die. So this one was just, um, it was a copy paper print that I did. Again, I don't know how I did it, but I like it. I liked it so much that I, <laughs> I wrapped it around a canvas board, about around a six by six canvas board. So I, I really like that. That's a, that's a watercolor one. So then what I do, I've got these stands and these are like my wandering, these are my wandering gallery pieces because I've got these stands all over the house. See, look. <laughs> and then, and then, and then they wander around, see? Look. <laughs> and then depending, that's why I was able to bring these with me because they're not attached to the wall. So that's great, you know? And then when you get fed up with it, or come Christmas, let's put them two away and to put two festive ones out. <laughs> yeah. So worth having a look at our stencil department, I'm, I must say, very... You know, it was a real eye opener for me when I realized that um, pretty much all the artwork on my wall involves a stencil. Oh, no. I know. Very strange. That's right, so now going back in the house. <laughs> okay. So now I reckon we must all have found those who want to join in this evening with the craft along. I'm sure that you will have found us by now. What am I? What do I think? Right. So, ten days ago or so, we were on the telly on Create and Craft, and the event. There was an event, May Day event, and we gave away a free stencil with every every customer who placed an order received a, a free stencil, and so many of you um, received a free stencil. And also included, we sent you um, the, the list of ingredients to join in with the craft along. Is that right? So everybody knows what they need and everybody knows what they're doing. So the whole point of it was, it's all free. It was a free stencil, although I ha I'm heartened to say that many people also bought the stencil who, who didn't order from Create and Craft. They just came to us and bought the stencil, which was very kind. Thank you very much. Now, this is the stencil. So it's an A5 stencil. Let's pan out a little bit because it's a little bit extreme. Great. Right, that'll do. Right, and I thought to myself, when we were cleaning and bagging these, I thought, well, if somebody put, receives this in the post, they're not going to have a Scooby 
not a clue, right, what to do with this. 500 customers on Create and Craft were sent the free stencil. Golly. So there you go. I bet there's not 500 of us in here, though, are there? <laughs> That's all right, because this will be recorded for posterity, and then it will go on YouTube. And our friends, when they unpack this and think, well, what's all this about? Then they can go and find out, can't they? Because we did leave the instructions on the packet. Now, let's have a look at this stencil and see what it involves, shall we? This is the, the unpacking of stencil coming up. Right, so it's an A5 stencil. And it's quite an interesting thing because there's five parts to it. So the first thing I want you to do is notice that it's, I've, I've made some marks on it with a Sharpie pen. And the reason for that is because it's easier to locate if you've got a little mark on your look. See, because it's not symmetrical, it's not completely symmetrical, it's, an, it's a smart move to do this. Because you've got your A5 outer, haven't you? See, I made a little dot there and I made a little dot there. So now I know that it will fit. Because if I turn this around like that, it won't fit. And if I turn it round back like that, it won't fit. Do you see? It only fits one way. And that's why we put the dots in place. Just a little, it's a registration mark, isn't it? There you go. So that's not hard, is it? And then same, similarly, the one in the center also needs a bit of, see, un, deux, trois. And then these bits here, right, so there's your three parts. One, two, three. Nice. So we've got those parts. Then in addition, we've got these bits. So let's move that out there. Let's do that. Let's do these bits. So these bits sit together too, right? Handy, like that. So we've got the land and we've got the sky. So I think I put a little dot on the top so I knew that that was the top. But I also put two little marks here to tell me, right, let me show you. Take those two out. So now I know that that sits in there like that. See? So there's the sky and there's the land. Or, of course, there's the sky and there's the land. Now, everything that, so that way, this is the hill. Uh-huh. Or that's the hill. There's so much potential in these five little bits of plastic, right? So I just wanted to explain what's with all the little marks. It just helps me relocate the pieces, right? That's what we've got. So have you got that in front of you as well? Yes? Good. Okay. So what we're going to do is make a couple of cards together. Let me just put this to one side. Right. So we're going to make a couple of cards together using these pieces. So put my glasses on and then we'll look through the ingredients while we're doing it. So you've got everything in front of you. So let's have a look at this one first. Right. So this is quite easy. Clarity stencil card. Let's have a look what we need. Clarity stencil card. Uh-huh. Then we need a couple of brushes. Brushes. Right. Oh, hello. I'm going to use that one. Right. So brushes. I dug out a box of brushes to show you just in case you've never seen them before. These are our stencil brushes. So you get four different ones. You get four different sizes. Right from large, medium, medium, small and small. And then they're, they're great. So if you haven't seen these before, they're well worth investing in. Right. So that's what you need, though, to do this job is that. Then we need some ink. So let me just put that to one side again. I don't need the new ones. Right. So we've got the brush because I'm only using one color. What color did I decide with? I decided on ocean, ocean reef for this job. OK, so that's all I've done. That, the stencil, that, that, right. That's all in the background. Then in addition to that, we took Annie's flyaway collection. So I've got the little boy. And I've, I've already mounted him. There we are. I did mention this to you, right? These are beautiful, beautiful stamps. 
by our darling Annie, who sadly lost the fight to cancer um, not that long ago, really. Only 33 years old. Terrible, really. Absolutely shocking. But there you go. This is her wonderful art that she left us. So she lives on. And I always love, he's my favourite stamp of all time, this little boy. So there you go. We've made them into one pack as a tribute to Annie because they're larger. We've got them in large, but we said this would be a nice way to go. So that's Annie's stamps. So we're using that this evening. And then we've got the wee trees, which are great. Oh, <laughs> look, these are great. Because I thought it would be nice that you could use any one of these trees, look, and it would look superb. That's the one I've gone for. Then you've got a winter one, you've got a larch. That's great for a reflection, that one. They all are, really. Okay, voila. So those are the, the wee trees. And then, so that's what we're going to use in that particular demo. Okay, easy. And, and the black ink, just so you know, got a black archival. Black archival. Right, so that's that. That's the first one we're going to do. And then I used a card blank, a white card blank, and uh, some old paper that I found, which just sits, it just sits nicely. Some old clarity paper. I might have to dig that out again, you know. We designed that years ago. It's really cool. It's got like a map in it, and it's all, oh, where did I put that piece that I trimmed off? It's quite nice. Let's have a look. I might have to, you know, when you've been around 30 years, look, see? It's got a map and all sorts, and you've got the ocean swirl on there, and it's quite nice, isn't it? So I'm thinking that we may have to revival, paper revival. Right. Anyway, so that's what's in the background. And then I thought, right, so that's the first one we're going to do. Then we're going to do the flower one, the daffodilly. I thought this was quite nice. Right, so we've got the daffodil, and again... We're using, we're using the stencil, but you can see it's, it, this is quite uh, subtle. Yeah. And, and I deliberately wanted to show you how you can fade like that. So, so when, you, when you look here, you can see it's quite pronounced at one point. There's obviously a blend of colours going on here. So in the first one, we're using just one colour. And then in this one, we're using two colours and the, and the daffodil. But I thought maybe we'd use a different flower. So that's what we're going to do. And then in that project, I thought we'd have a look at the card blanks and, and decide how to tone the card blanks down with the brushes, you know. So that's that one. But the only, the only thing that we've added to that now from before, we've used the ocean swirl, but then when you add golden turmeric, that's how you get this different colour. That's how you go from, you go from blue to green is obviously add in yellow right okay so that's the color we're going to use then or a yellow ink pad whichever you have and then I thought I was thinking about Annie today and I thought yep got to be done so then I thought right we'll bring in a different set of pencils of course you can do it with this one goes without saying but it's only because it was a moon I thought do you know we're going to use a different set of stencils, people. <laughs> so I brought these in, right? But that doesn't mean you can't do the job with this. I'm just showing you that we've got these really, really simple stencils that are very, very effective as a, as a frame, okay? The two different sets. I'm just going to go with the round one here. So we'll do that later. And that's that. So, and then that one, the only color, I went to a different sort of color there. It's the same, it's the same ink, same brush. Keep it simple. Distress ink. I just like the color faded jeans. I like that color. So I thought we'd do that one instead. So that's an additional one. And then, of course, we're using Annie stamps and the trees again. So now we're combining. We're combining both sets again. And we're using You Hung the Moon. We've got a lovely, great big moon. And then we've, we've used that tree instead, that one. And I'll show you how to mask that off. Because now, of course, this hill, you know where we found that, don't you? Yeah. There it is. Like that. Okay. So it all ties in very nicely. And that's what we're going to do. Are you ready to get started, friends? Are you ready to get started? Well, good. We'll start with the daffodil, I think. Shall we start with the daff? Yeah. We'll start with the daff. And then we'll move to the landscape. I think we'll do it that way around. Right. 
Okay, okay. Yeah. Let's start with the DAF and then we'll move to the landscape. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's in my head, it's, it's, there's a flow then. Okie dokie. You ready to start? Right. Stencil card. Get a piece of stencil card. Eight by, it's seven by seven. What am I saying? Have you got some low tap masking tape as well? That's useful. Get yourself some low tap masking tape. Yeah. So we've got some low tap masking tape. We're going to use, we'll put those pieces to one side because we're going to use them. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll pan out a little bit. So you've got a better idea of what it is I'm actually achieve, trying to achieve here. So what we what we want first is the outline. So we'll take our, and I'm mindful of the fact that lots of you are actually crafting along. So we'll take it slowly. We'll take it simply. I mean, it's not, this isn't a paid workshop. It's not a masterclass. There are no experts in this building. All we're doing, all we're doing, is hanging out together on a Friday night because there's nothing worth watching on the telly and because we are creative people. And also because you sent one of these things and I feel I have a duty to tell you what to do with it all. Right, so that's it. We've, we've run the masking tape up the side and that, of course, that protects your artwork and it gives you a, a nice random oval shape. So the next thing we need is a brush. Okay, brush, brush, brush. I'm gonna go with a yellow one. See, with the brushes, yellow's good because the brushes are washable, but the thing is that they, um, the yellow, always keep one yellow, yellow. You'll hear me say this often because if you, tr if you try to, um, if you try to wash it and then use it with blue, you're never going to get a blue because it'll go green and you'll never go back to yellow again. Yeah, so it's always good to keep the yellow yellow. There you go. And that's another reason why I'm laying the yellow down first, okay, because that's, that's also important. If you lay the yellow down first, then you won't contaminate your brush. If I put the blue down first and then go over with the yellow, well, you know what's going to happen. My brush is going to go green. So we need a bit of copy paper. Are you do who's doing this with me then? Look, nice yellow. Right, and then we're going to start swirling. Let's just go around the outside. Here we go. Round we go. Let's just swirl. Have you got any have you got any makeup? Well, makeup sponges. Have you got any makeup sponges or spot on? We sell spot on sponges, which are really good. They're polyurethane, so they don't crumble, especially when you're using stencils, they're good. They're worth having. Right, so let's have a look. Round we go, round and round the garden. So you've got choices. You can sweep in like that, or you can go round. And the longer you do this, stands to reason, the longer you do this, the darker it's going to get. Yeah? So when you take one of these, these um, spot-on sponges, you see, you can really sharpen up the outline when you sweep in don't need loads and sometimes see with this brush now i know that's got yellow on i could go back to that in a month's time and i'll get a lovely there'll still be yellow on it it doesn't it doesn't dry out it's great so it's almost like dry brushing but you get a lovely effect see so now i've got my yellow i've done that and I've left it quite light in the middle. Can you see that? It's like a nice sort of, um, what do we call that? A vignette? Yeah? It's nice. If I, were to, if I were to lift this up now, you'd see. Let's have a look. Right, I'll hold it down on one side and I'll lift it up on one side so you can see. There you go. It's lovely. Easy. Right, so now we've done that. We won't use the yellow for a while now. So we'll shut that down. And now we'll go to our blue one. But this time, what I want to do is use this piece. This piece. So we're going to slot that now into here. So this is it. You've got multiple layers. So don't get me wrong. This would be lovely 
as a landscapey, wouldn't it? Let's just stop for a minute. If I wanted to, uh, maybe that way around, it'd be a bit extreme, but I could do a really nice landscape now, and that could be the sky, you see? And that could be the land. So you've got masks, you cover that bit up, you do the dark bit, and, and all that, you see, if you, if you look at this piece here, this is a miniature version, isn't it, of that, really, okay? So, so just bear in mind that you've got a really nice aperture frame there. Then we'll take this one and we'll, we'll marry up our dots. Is everybody happy? Hey, you all right? We'll marry up our dots. There you go. Now, the thing is, though, I've got to get a kind of a, an, this is the bottom and this is the top. But I've got to decide because now I'm going to change the amount. You see, if you look, you can see there's a lot more going on down here than up here. So that's just something that we want to kind of focus on, isn't it? So let's have a look. If I take a piece of masking tape, let's just hold it in place. I just want to hold it in place while I'm working. Right, because I don't want it flicking around. Now, let's use the blue. This is going to be a little bit dark, but you can see it's already got a little bit on it. Let's have a look. Are you keeping up with me all right? Hey, How long are we going to be doing this? Well, it ain't over till it's over, is it? Come on. When we get into this, are you new? Are you new to the fold or are you, are you, look, don't do that, Greg. Have you been in the craft along before, or are you are is it are you a craft along virgin? Huh? Oh yeah. Well, don't worry, because first of all, there are absolutely no experts in the room. They're just a bunch of like-minded people hanging out, having a crack. Okay. And if you're new, don't be lonely. There are about two hundred others all doing the same thing at the moment, all hanging out together, drinking a cup of tea or a glass of wine or whatever, okay? And some are just listening, some are crafting along, some are shopping, some are watching, you know? It, we're here to keep you company. That's what this is all about. It's not about the result. It's just about learning a few tricks and tips on how to use stencils, getting to know me a bit better, if I'm, if I'm new to you, see? So now what I'm doing is I'm getting rid of Denise. Welcome, Denise. Lovely to have your company. Denise is new to the fold. Now, we're going to add another layer. Enjoy this, Denise. You might enjoy the stencils. Let's have a look. Are you a stenciler? Now, let me show you something. As we Let's call this the base, right? I'm going to sweep in one direction. Let me just sweep in one direction all the time in one direction. There's a method in my madness. See, so I'm just holding it so it doesn't flick when I work. And I'm going to keep going in this direction just to make a point. Right? Just sweep, 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 sweep. I'm not going back on myself, see? Just sweeping in one direction all the time. Because you've got so much more control than you think you have with these brushes. Now, I'm not saying that we're going to leave it like this. I'm just saying I want to show you what happens if you only sweep in one direction. Now, see, I don't have to worry. It's going to relocate, isn't it? Because it it's built to fit. But if when I lift this up now, you'll see it's, it's very much, it, you get a drop shadow. Look, let me come in a bit tighter so you can see it. You see, when you come in from one side, you get a drop shadow. And you could do that, say you could take a black now or a dark grey and go again. And you, you could accentuate all the time that edge. So you could get really arty with stencils. That's all I'm saying, right? Just by adding a drop shadow like that. And what's great about these is, of course, I'm only using this so that it doesn't pop out when I'm... That's it, see? Now, if I don't want a drop shadow, then when I'm using the brushes... The brushes are great. God, you know, I remember, I remember years ago, not, no, actually not that long ago, before, before lockdown for sure, right? It was amazing. We, we, we've always used these brushes with our stencils, right? And so now if I don't want to drop shadow, I can go this way, right? 
And what happened was we 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 went in we went in the warehouse and we looked because it was like, well, do we reorder or not? Because it takes months to get them. And um, we looked in the warehouse and we had about two thousand boxes. You know, if you're thinking about whether if you're thinking, shall I or shan't I buy a buy a box of brushes, right? <laughs> So we buy them like 5,000 at a time, okay? <laughs> it makes the postage worthwhile, put it like that. And it takes about six months to get them. So we, we had these in the, in the warehouse. We had about 2,000 of them, right? And I said, oh, that'll keep us going for ages. <laughs> you know, we don't need to order them, right? Save a fortune. That'll keep us going, I said. And then these orders started coming in from America. America, vast, right? And the first order came in from a shop in America. They wanted 400 or 500 sets, right? We thought, money. Okay, <laughs> quick, pack them up, get them out to the States. And then a couple of days later, another order came in from the States. It kept coming from the States, right? <laughs> we were like, what's going on? And then, anyway, right, long story short, within a week, our 2,000 sets were gone. We had about 20 left. We're like, what is going on, people? Right? We know America's big, but somebody must have shone a light on them. So I started digging around. There's a lady called Jennifer Maguire, right? A blogger. Obviously, what I would call uh, a market influencer, right? So she's done a little demo like this, just 10 minutes. She's discovered our brushes. She loves them. She shows the Americans how they work. And boom, within a week, our year's supply was gone, yeah? So then we ordered it. We ordered more very quickly. Isn't that amazing, though, how one little demo from an influencer, yeah, we didn't know what hit us. Yeah, I remember it well. And that's the thing, you know, the States is vast, isn't it? Have we got anyone from America in? I wonder, do we have anybody from the States in? Now, have a look. When I take this away, see how you can make it blend? See, I love that. I love that I can make that blend like that. I can give a drop shadow on it. I can make it really open there. And the other thing that I can do, right, I could take that away now. If I wanted to, I could add a little bit of an edge up there now. So there's nothing to say I can't work in layers. See, that's how I got this part with none of this. See, you just lift it away. And the thing about the brushes, you see, now I'm going to leave that nice and true and yellow, but the colours blend so beautifully. See, so I could go back in. I'm, I'm a bit reluctant to go back in with yellow because you know what I said about making my brush green. Don't want to do that. Right. So now let's say... I'm quite happy with that. If I wanted to add a little bit more up here, looks a bit like it's completely gone, isn't it? I don't know, though. I quite like it. Then all I've got to do, relocate my little dots. See, that's the key, isn't it? You really, it's a good idea to do that. And now I can go back in again like that. And if I want to, just to give myself a little bit of a an edge, You'd be surprised how far this ink goes when you do this. Right? I wonder if that will help a bit. Have a look. There you go. See? And suddenly you've got a whisper. I love this. So we've got our outline now. Yeah. Now, do you want to frame it? Do you want to put an edge around it? Yes or no? If you do, now's the time to do it while the stencil is in place. Okay. So we're going to take our spot on sponge and we're just going to wipe through because that cleans the stencil as well. That's the other thing is it's a good cleaning trick to do this. Right. OK, excellent. Can we stop and have a cup of tea for a minute? Can we just have a sip of tea? This is the trouble. This is reminds me of when we do the shows, when we go and do the exhibitions. I'm retiring from exhibitions. I haven't got I'm, I haven't got it in me anymore. This is my exhibition. Um, Although we have got open days coming up, I'll tell you about that. But but what happens is when we do the big exhibitions, you just go in like the clappers, you know, eight hours a day, four days. It's it's crazy. And I'm in my 60s now. You know, we've got to pace, pace ourselves a bit better than this. 
And I just noticed, oh, I was starting to speak faster and get a little bit frantic. And when that happens, friends, you have to slow down. Um, chill. Wait for everyone to catch up. There you are. Then off we go again. Right. Tea's good for that. Hit the pause button. Right. So now we've done that. We've got our background. We're kind of working out how this stencil works. Yeah. So that's a good thing. Now, if you want to put that black edge around there now, what you need is, uh, yeah, I've got a few, Micron pen. Right, Micron pens. I'm assuming there are newcomers. These are Micron pens, Denise. Right, so Micron pens, they're, um, they're drawing pens, really great artist pens, pack of seven of them, different sizes. They're great. When we're in the shack on a Monday and a Thursday at 10 o'clock, we doodle with these, don't we? They're good. So where's my... Don't ask me why I've got so many open. <laughs> Do you know why? I'll tell you why. It is. It's because my life is chaos and I can never find anything. <laughs> so I keep opening up another packet. I've got to stop doing that. Stop cracking open another pack of biscuits. Look for the ones that are half eaten. I'll do the same with my pens too. Right, so now I've got a number one, which works. Right, while we're on it, let's make sure we don't press too hard with these. But don't worry, this isn't wasted because what I'll do is these, when we have our, we do our retreats in August, if you fancy hanging out with a bunch of like-minded people, like properly for two days, um, between it's around the, the middle of August, like between the 15th and the 20th, around then, we have three back-to-back two-day retreats. And we we spend two days and the evenings just hanging out together, making cars, making art. I drive the bus, Paul helps, and there are about 40 people that come and they all converge on on the on the, the workshop space in Ditton. It's a really fabulous retreat. Uh, if you fancy joining us, you know, then we've got some spaces left. It'd be great to see you. And my point is that these pens will go to the retreat. So everyone's got something. They're not wasted, never wasted. All right. I've tested them and I, I know they work. All right. So once we've done this and this is in place, now what we're going to do, and I've, I'm going to go quiet now because I don't want to mess this up. You're going to go round. Right. Here we go. And you just kiss the edge. Kiss the edge. And then turn it. I find, but what you're doing, you're not pressing hard. You're just guiding the pen, right? Make sure that the pen's good. And then go back over where you were. There you go. And then go again. And you'll find, because you're kissing the edge, um, and you're leaning against the the plastic the stencil there you go so you overlap and you go again and there you are so now you've got your your outer edge and if you want to go again to make it thicker now's the time it's easier to do it now okay is my head in the way or am i all right right it's easier to do it now than try and relocate the stencil okay just saying. Right, that'll do. Now, I've used a black micron pen. You could use a yellow um, perga colour pen. You could use a pencil. You could use a Sharpie pen. You could use whatever you fancy. I'm just using what I've got in front of me. Right, so now let's take this away. And then what we have got, there we are, is our base. We've got our base now. Easy, easy, easy. All right? Easy. And once we've got that, then all we've got to do is add the flower, right? So flowers, let's have a look. We've got loads of different flowers. I wanted to just highlight, shine a light on these lovely stamps. And I don't know if you saw these. These were, I think this is what we were actually, wasn't this what we were doing on the telly when we gave the stencil away, Paul? These lovely little stamps. So these are pretty cool. And... Um, Look, I'll show you. So we've got all different ones. 
so that that's the little one right this is nice there we go there's a these are these are the different there it is this was the original i love this artwork i you know every now and again you really hit and uh, you you hit a, the jackpot i really like this background i don't know how i did it but it came out really nicely um but you see we've got the original stamps which are this size and then we've we decided to make smaller ones because we thought they were it's nice it's just lovely for card card making and um and any one of these whether you use the daffodil or whether you use the floral spray this is that would be quite nice in there wouldn't it not in red but you know what i mean um but see that one would sit in the larger aperture and the small one sits beautifully in the, in that one so that's worth noting and then the difference between the large that's what i wanted to show you as well right if here's the large one there's the large piece and I'm just showing you a comparison of the sizes of the flowers because it's a big difference between that and that, okay? When you, but when you get the larger flowers, oh, they are glorious. Guess what they come with? Yeah, they come with a stencil, see? So that's useful, very, very useful, see? Bingo, actual size stencil. So the large ones come with a stencil, the small ones don't. But then the small ones, they sit in here beautifully. And then we gave you the free stencil anyway. So let me just put this stuff away while, because this is going to take me all weekend again to sort this out if I don't. Oh, well. Oh, yeah, that, let's just put this one in here. And then what we'll do is we will stamp a flower. You can pick your flower now. Which one are you going to go for? Have you got a flower or oh, don't you want to bother? I get it. I get it. I get it. So I've got them all lined up here. And which one shall I use? I'm thinking I really like the ginkgo because we've got, we've got, we've done the daffodil. You know what the daffodil looks like. So what about if we did the ginkgo? Doesn't that look gorgeous? Hey, doesn't that look lovely? Right, we're going for it. Cool, I hope it works <laughs> after all this. Ah! Well, let's see. Why shouldn't it work? Should we help it a bit? Come on, then. I'll tell you what we'll do. A couple of top tips for stamping. Top tips for stamping. I'm going to put something a little bit softer underneath because this is quite a big stamp. Right, and that's going to go on there. Right. Move this stuff out the way. You know the black mats, that's another, the mat underneath here actually is soft on the other side because um, our groovy mats that we use, hang on, I'm going to come and find one now to show you. So I've, I've reached for the pergamon mono mat. See, it's soft. So you've got the groovy mat and then on that side it's, it's soft because we use it for parchment art. So that's a good thing. You can just flip it over and use that. Listen, friends. You can use a, a mouse pad, anything, just something that's got a bit of give, even a, a wedge of paper, something that just gives it a little bit of give. That should do the job. Right, let's have a look. Um, it's just sometimes people want a little bit more help with stamping. Right, so we've got that, got that, got that. And now I just want to, I want to stamp it once just to make sure. Sometimes you've got to make, you've got to check your ink pad, especially if you're doing a workshop, because let's ink it up. Let's see which one have we got here. Right. Let's see what we've got. And we'll ink this up. It's like seasoning, if you like. Mid-Missouri, Louisville, Michigan, West Virginia, Illinois, and Brooklyn. Well, I'll be. Our American friends are in town. Welcome. Right, let's have a look. How wet's your ink pad? How dark do you want the picture to be? Do you want it black? Doesn't have to be black. Let's just check what this stamp looks like, whether I've got the right ink pad. I'm just using it without a mat on a piece of copy paper just to see that it works before I start. I think it's always a good idea, especially if you've done all that work, don't you? 
So you, um, you can always rub the back a bit, like that. Yeah, good enough. I'd be pleased. If it turns out like that in there, I'll be happy. Hey? <laughs> right, let's give it another go. Copy paper. Are you a stamper as well? Or are you just are you just a stencil artist? No, you, the two go hand in hand, really, don't they? I, well, I think they do. So we're going to use that ink pad in the middle, make a plan. Is that inky already? Grey. Not a good start. So I'm using... Um, I'm using uh, a Ranger, American, America, Ranger archival ink. I, I, I'm a big fan of Ranger. I love their ink pads. Um, the Versa, there's another one that's very, it's, it's, it's wetter and slower. It's Versa, Versa Fine, I think it's called. Um, and that's very nice too. Right, let's have a look. I probably don't want to even bother, I won't bother with that. I'm just saying that that is a good way to, to work if you, you want to. Right, so ink up stamp. Let's see. Make sure we've got a good, good amount of ink. And then we're going to press on there. I think it's going to look lovely. There, that'll do. Right, and then we'll press on to the centre. Do you use stamp positioners? See, I'm... I'm not sure. Sometimes I think stamp positioners, whilst they're great for positioning, obviously the clue's in the name, I think sometimes you don't get the pressure that you need, especially with the bigger stamps. What do you think? It's just my my opinion. Opinions are like noses. Everyone's got one. Now, let's see. Can I lift that up and can I burnish the back just to be sure, to be sure? Hope it works. Oh, perfect. Isn't that pretty? There you go. We've got a ginkgo tree right outside our kitchen door. And I wish, I wish I could take you just through the door around the back here and show you. It's, it's so beautiful. And, and it's just um, bright yellow, like, well, lime green, and then it goes yellow. It's really lovely. So let's have a look at these stamps because I want to show you how they work while we're doing the centerpiece. So did you get this stamp on the show? Did you treat yourself when you got the free stencil? Because if you didn't, you don't know what you're missing. Let's let me show you. See the stamp, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. You see in the center, the leaves are all numbered. And on the outside, the leaves are all numbered. So what I'm going to do, let me just take, I just need... I'm going to take the yellow ink pad. I'll show you how it works. Take the yellow ink pad. And all of the stamps are like this. If you use the poppy, you'll see the pictures numbered and the, the blooms are numbered. So that one fits that one, that one fits that one, that one fits that one. Yeah? Same with the... Um, I drew this one. What's this one? Uh, Chinese lantern. See all the all the the buds, all the tops. They all they're all numbered, so they fit beautifully. It's a great coloring system, and I'll show you how this one works. Let's start. Right. So number two is the big one. Number two is the big one. Let's start at the top and work our way down. It's a lot faster than you think. So you go like that, and then I'm going to use golden turmeric. These are those uh, artistry inks. And we'll just go like that. Can you see this? Right, hover until you have. This is a slower drying ink pad, so you don't have to worry about. Look, isn't that lovely? There you go. So that's it. If you want it to be darker, well, guess what? You can either go again or let's go again just to see if. It, usually it gets darker if you wait until it dries a bit. Look, see? More vibrant. Isn't that lovely? So what about that? Now that camera's rubbish. Right, let's use this one. See, so then I could just need the one handle, really, the one, the one mount to do the job. 
So I'll take the, this is the best thing to do. So then we've got the little one here. Well, let's start at the top then, because I can see this one's number one. So let's take that number one, stick that on there, ink it up, and I'll show you. So you go in, hover with the handle. I can see, you see, I can see. There you go. Want it a bit darker? Go again. Hover with the handle, and you can see straight through the stamp. I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? There you are. Nice. Right, was there another one? No, that'll do. Right, and then we've got number three. Should we take number three? That's this one. So that's going to sit like that. The only thing I would suggest when you do this, see, it's quite fast. When you do this, be sure that you can see the stamp. Obviously, if it's a stamp position, it's a piece of cake, you just lie it down, don't you, on the ink it up and then go. This is a little bit more mechanical than that. Right, see, so you hover till you're happy with the... There you go. Isn't that nice? Don't all have to be dark. Let's just do a bit of dark. I've just added a bit of depth to the bottom part of the stamp. There you go. Nice, hey? So we'll put it back on its home perch. Now this one here, see, because it's round the back, this comes in two parts. So it's actually perfect for colouring in like that. So that's going to sit. So if you like, what you can do is you can lay it on the stamp, on the actual picture, so you can see where it's going to go. Pick it up. Now you know it's in the right place for your, you know, ergonomically, right? So then you can hold it like that. You can see exactly where it's going to go. And then in you go. There you go. That'll do. Don't do that more than that. That'll do. And then we've got this one here, which is number, what's this one? Number six. So we'll go to number six. That doesn't look like number six. This is number six. That's it. You can see, can't you? There you go. So we'll pick that one up, pick it up, ink it up. So I could do some, I could do some green ones as well. If I wanted to, I could go back in with the, I wonder what would happen if we went back in with the ocean, the ocean swirl. But I love the yellow. I just think it just jumps beautifully. I drew this uh, particular stamp myself. Well, we did it in the shack, didn't we, together? Do you remember? We doodled it. This is what we do. This is what we doodle. Um, we did this one together. It came out really nice, didn't it? Right, see, so that way you just make sure you've got the right, because they all look the same, but then when you lay them on there, when you lay them down, it's not taking long, is it? So you ink up your yellow. And then just hover. We call these two-way overlay stamps, and I think they're pretty cool. Look at that. Got a couple left. See, do you want to do them? Do you want to leave them? Project completion grey. <laughs> so what is that one there then? That one's number four. Okay, this is number four. It's quite easy really. Here we are. Just got to be a bit patient. There you go. There it goes. It's nice, isn't it? You don't... And then I've got the last one. So the last one is this one, which is number eight. Now, where's number eight? It's eight. There it is. So it's a good job we numbered them all. This would be a real game. <laughs> Imagine trying to figure it out. Yeah, nice. Eh? So that's like that, you see. So I want to be able to see it. So I press down on there. And I know it's in the right place. Are you enjoying this? So this, my friends, was the stencil that we designed this stencil. There you go. Isn't that pretty? Voila. We designed this stencil with the flowers in mind because we felt that it need they, they would it would just be perfect for them. Isn't that nice? There you go. And then you know, I was talking about the dry brushing. If you take your yellow brush, let me show you, and you just 
if you wanted to, I'm not saying that you do, but just say if you wanted to just add, um, a, break that whiteness around the outer edge of your card, then the brush is a perfect way to do this. I spent the longest time using a brayer to do this, see? And you just sweep, you sweep back and forth like that. And I haven't re-inked the brush. You know, I was saying about the ink is on. The ink is on the brush. Hey, I just realized, I bet it's Grace in Brooklyn. Oh, Gracie. Grace is my daughter. She heads up the, the US branch of our company. Don't you, darling? I bet it's Grace. Of course it is, if she's in Brooklyn. And if it's not Grace in Brooklyn, then whoever you are in Brooklyn, Grace is in Brooklyn. We have a clarity stamps in Brooklyn. Yes, we do. Aha. Watch this space. Watch this space. Exciting times ahead. Now that we've, we're back out of lockdown, we've got plans, friends. Right. So you see how you can just create a really nice um, vinaigrette, <laughs> vignette, right? So that's one thing I wanted to just show you. And then we'll finish by, there you go, job's complete. One handle. One set of stamps. These are these are good hand. These are good mounts. These are our mega mounts. This is a four by four, and it, it's it's nice and slim. So you've got a bit more give on these for the bigger stamps. They're quite good. And then what you do is just peel that off again. Just gently peel the stamp. Just peel it away. See, they won't tear, but you don't want it to tear by ripping at it. There you go. And then it goes back on its home base. And the lovely thing is, of course, it's all numbered and ready to go again. Right. So that's the first project done. How about that then? Did we enjoy that one? Yes? No? Cool. I wish we were in the same room together. Be a lot easier, wouldn't it? But then again, how, how would you? Can you imagine having 200 odd people? Not 200 odd people. About 200 people in the room. <laughs> You know, that'd be a hell of a workshop, wouldn't it? So this way, everybody gets a front seat. Everybody gets the tipple of their choice. Uh, everybody gets to see. Nobody feels pressured. It's quite good. But don't forget, we don't get 200 people when we, come, when we do our retreats. We get 40, you know, it'd be fun. Gracie is helping us get our groovy club plates over here. Yes, she is. She is. The cost of US postage has gone through the roof. Why would you ever write a letter to anybody? The US mail has gone mad. Yeah, it's cheaper. Well, it's crazy. So Grace has found a solution over there anyway. So our club friends can um, can, can join the club. Um, and then what we do is we ship it to Grace and then Grace distributes the club, which is working really well. Now we just need to figure out a solution for the Canadians because it's so expensive to, to bounce from New York to, to Canada. It's crazy. But we're on it. We're really, really proactive trying to be inclusive and not shut it, you know, just keep it going. Because I think people, I think our friends in America really like what we do, don't you? Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Okay. So we've done that one. And now, I think that came out particularly well. So now let's have a look. Should we do this one? Let's do this one. It's easy, easy, easy. So start again. Right, we'll put that away. Have a little sup. Get your stencil. Right, this time we're not using the yellow. So park the yellow. We're not using the yellow brush at all. So put the brush back. Just using this, might get a tad of yellow coming through there, but so what? That's fine. I'm not going to wash it. And now we need to get started again. See, it's very repetitive, but repetitive, not repetitive. Let's do this one, shall we? Should we give it a go? Come on then. This is really easy, this one. But we're going to use the other part of the stencil now. I want to show you how to use this and how to get 
that's that feeling of how it disappears and you know you you, you know we've already tried we've already done a little bit of it on here it's it's about it's just about sweeping through and it repeat it where, where you go again and again it will be darker that's it it's that straightforward right so here let's go again i think the other thing with this is repetition repetition is the key the more you do something we have a friend here elizabeth and um, elizabeth said to me at one of the open days once she's very very disabled elizabeth like really she's an absolute inspiration to me and uh, she really loves she really rates our groovy system because she said i remember i'll never forget it she said the reason i love the groovy system is because it's the first time in my life that i can do something unassisted it's the first time she said because of the groovy plate mate i can i can work without help well, do you know what? That's quite quite something. It, it certainly took the wind out of my sails, you know. That's quite humbling to hear, isn't it? You know, we take it for granted. You know, you take it for granted that you can put the tape down. You take it for granted that you can ink your brush up. It's just an assumption, isn't it? It's a built-in, you know, of course you can. And then you meet somebody who can't. And she was so excited because the groovy plate mate held everything in place for her while she went, you know, blew my mind. And, um, and the other thing, what she said was, and this was so like poignant, such an intelligent person, right? Here we go again, see, with the blue. She said, the more you do, the better you get. And the better you get, the more you want to do. Boom, so obvious. And it's so true, isn't it? The more you do, the better you get. Rep repeat, 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 practice, 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 right? The more you do, the better you get the better you get, the more you want to do, boom. And it's so true. I see it with my pottery. I see it with my artwork. So now what we're doing is we're doing the same thing again, but this time let's not do too much around the outside with the blue. We're just setting the scene because if you look, the outside is blue, but very light blue, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So we definitely got to put a bit of blue down. Right, let's put a bit of blue down. In fact, let's go all the way over. Let's do a little bit like that. Look, sweep, sweep, sweep. Slowly, I'm doing this. I'm going that way. I'm using the side of the brush. See? The thing about this, um, right, now I've done that. Now, where did I put them? Old fire. Don't go away. Oh, come on, Gray. Where did you put them? Talk among yourselves for a minute. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. We do have them. I know I, I had them earlier. Here they are. Right, because in a minute you're going to go, well, you didn't tell us we needed them, did you? No. <laughs> now you can go and scramble and look for yours. Moon masks. We need a little moon mask, right? We need a little moon mask. So don't forget, we need that as well. <laughs> They're all up. Now I've got to go and find a moon mask. I'm cosy. Well, go on, go and get a moon mask. We don't need it quite yet. But you will need it in a moment. So then what you're going to do, right, you're going to take this. Again, you marry that up. Are we happy with it? Have we got enough blue, do you think? Oh, I don't know. It depends how dark it is. Depends what time of day it is. Right, so now we'll pop that one in. You know that that's exactly where it goes. We've relocated it. Yeah. And then <laughs> we're going to put a moon mask in because we don't want the moon to be any darker than that, do we? So we stick that in there like that. That'll do. All right. Now, so let's stages, deconstruct. So we've got the blue around the outside. Now what we're going to do is put some de more depth around this, around the outside. I mean, I'm winging it here. I can't remember. It's been a couple of weeks since I did this. Right, ready? Okay. Right. Loading brush. Now, I tell you what I will do though, just so it doesn't pop out, I'm gonna do that. Just so it doesn't pop out, I'll move it in a minute. Right, here we go. But this time, I'm not, I don't wanna drop shadow. I'm going back and forth and back and forth, sweep, 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 sweep. Round we go. 
right? Sweep, 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 sweep. You're using the side of the brush. You don't stab it. If you want it nice and smooth, just use the side of your brush like that. Back and forth, back and forth. This will look lovely. I reckon it will work anyway. Right, now we're going to go over the edge a bit. Give it a bit of definition. Of course, this is quite dark, isn't it? Be lovely. Right, now we need to come over this. Right, now take that. Pop that down there. That won't stick, I don't think, because it's too wet ink, isn't it? <laughs> right, ready? Around the edge. Top edge. Stick to the outside. Just stick to the outside for the minute. Mm, you're right. Come over the moon a bit. Right, let's, let me show you another trick with the brushes. See, you can get right tight on the bristles and you can, that'd be good. Okay, what do I think? Let's have a look. I reckon this would be nice. Oh yeah, cool. <laughs> well, looks similar, huh? So you see now we've got a nice outside going. Okay, we've definitely got a moon haven't we? We've got an outside, we've got a moon. We've got a little boy. Now we want to put, we need, now we need this bit, this bit. See here, that's going a lot across there like that, isn't it? So what we're going to do now is decide, right, a little bit of sizing going on here, friends. So if the tree's going to go in there, that's what that little mark is. It's from the it's from the tree stump. <laughs> there you go. From the bar. Right, so the tree's going to go there like so. So I can decide now. See, it doesn't have to be exactly in there, does it? You just want a hill, really. Hang on. Get that back in there. You just want a hill. See, it did go in there exactly. I did actually put it in there, didn't I? All right. So that went in there exactly like that. But then that must have gone. Oh, I've done it round the other way. Doesn't matter. It's easy, this is. Right, so we do that. Stick that down like so. Don't worry about that little thing because the tree's going to come up a bit now. Right. And Now take this. Hold that tight. Going to do an overlay. You could put it underneath if you wanted, couldn't you? I wonder, just bear with a minute. If I did that, like that, just stick that in there. No, no, I don't want to do that actually. I'm going to, I'm going to just keep this as a guide, a rough guide. I'm going to hold it with my hand, right? And I'm going to avoid this bit because I don't want to go into the edge. And I'm just going to go like this, right? And I want a bit of depth now, don't I? Probably should have inked up the, well, but there you go. It can get tighter. This is going to look good. But i tell you what I am going to do. I'm going to stick that down now like that so it doesn't move. And I'm going to go and get myself a bit more ink. Okay. Right, a bit more of this lovely ink. What colour is it? Ocean. Right. Okay, here we go. I'm going to make it a bit darker. Holds it tight. And now we sweep in, right, but we don't want to, don't want to go there and we want to be gentle up here, right? So we sweep, sweep, sweep like that. And then here we sweep a bit darker over this side. That's what I think anyway. Okay. Bit, bit extreme grey. <laughs> it, it. It's all right. I bet this would be lovely. Told you there are no experts. Of course, it's a bit dark, right? <laughs> but the thing is, if I lift it off, I'll never be able to put it back again. So I'm just going to see what that looks like. Oh, pretty cool, even if I say so myself. <laughs> see, and then if you want to make it darker, you can always keep going, can't you, around the outside? See? Get a bit of depth. 
dust, you know, like a bit of a mist, not dust. <laughs> this would be good. Let's have a look when I take this away. I like that. I like that. I like that a lot. It is dark because of the shadow of the tree, Paul says. Well, okay, good. Let's get the tree in then, I say. Right, so we'll just take our spot-on sponge and we'll add a bit of depth to the edge because that will give us the outer edge. See, because we're not going to put a pen line around there. So let's see if this works. What glasses have I got? Oh, no wonder I can hardly see. See, <laughs> just realised I've got the I've got the long distance glasses on. And I can't see what I'm doing. Right, that's better. Of course, it's, it is a bit strong, isn't it? That's okay though. Right now, let's just peel that little fella off. Cool, nice. Replace on mask wall, and now we need to put this into place. So, where's that mask gone again? Right, down it goes again. Pop it back into some sort of position. Ooh, like that. Okay, cool. Now I need my black ink pad to do this. And he's going to sit right there. Actually, it's exactly the same as it was before. All hail to the stencil. Right, let's get this little... So this little tree comes from... Look, these are great. I tell you what, you know, like, there are things that are essential when you're a crafter. And if you're a stamper and you do landscapey stuff, these trees, these wee trees, are essentials, in my opinion. To be honest, for landscaping... I think any stamps are essential as well because they just, it doesn't matter which one you use, they just always look so lovely. Right, let's have a look. Nice tree, ink up, test it, and plant. Okay, and plant. And if it's missing a bit at the base, which it isn't, you can always add it, can't you? There you go, perfect. So there's a little lone tree in front of our, nice, huh? And now we need the flyaway boy. There's not a day goes by when I don't think of any. Right. Testing, testing, testing. Let's just make sure that we've got it all lovely and inked up. Gorgeous, gorgeous stamp. Gorgeous stamp. Right. Get rid of the excess. So decide where he's going to be. Now, because he's coming out of the stencil, I think it's time for the reveal. So I think we're going to get rid of this because I want him coming out of the opening. See, look, isn't that lovely? I love that drop shadow. Nice. That was more luck than judgment. <laughs> Good though. Look, see, look, see where it's, it's where the stencil, there was a tiny little gap because I, I attached it up here. So the ink dropped in there. Isn't that super? Built in drop shadow. You don't get many of them to the pound. Right now, he's going to sit exactly there like that. Or you could put him where you like. You could put him up a little bit. So he's, see, it's quite dark here. I mean, when I planted this one, I thought, hmm, do I like him there? Or do I want to put him up a little bit? You know, do you want him in the picture? Choices, choices, choices. It's your picture, you decide. But whatever you decide, let's get him in place now. So we've got the flyaway boy. We're going to ink him up. Just ink him up. And then we'll just plant him. Right, don't do the grey, just do the job. Right, and down. And plant. Right. So you see there's such a marriage between stamps and stencils, isn't there? Hey, okay. I reckon that'll look good. Absolutely wonderful. There you go. Voila. So that's that one done. That's that one done. 
And then again, around the outside, just as we did before, if you want to, I trimmed this a little bit, see, because it was eight by eight. So I trimmed it so it's equidistant on either on all four sides. Yeah. But there you go. So that's that one. And then you know when once you've trimmed it, then you just take your you take the edge like let me do it on this side. And then you can just you sweep like that. And then you just come in onto the paper, come in onto the card, and that's how you get that lovely, very, very like almost like um uh, what's the word when you airbrush something? Yeah, it's like an airbrushed effect around the outside. So it's very, very easy and very, very pretty. So there you go. Number two. And I, I you know, I said that we were just going to do those two. And then I, I was, got carried away today. But I thought it'd be nice to just show you something really simple that kind of ties in all of these things. So let's just have a little recap before we crack on. Are you up for a little bit more? We'll finish by nine. We'll be easily finished by nine o'clock. Easily finished by nine o'clock. So let's have a look, shall we? This is pretty, isn't it? But you can see that you can see how effective these these stamps are. Uh, these stencils, the stamps also. So now let's have a look. I want to show you this one, right? Now, before we do that one, let's have a little break. Let's have a little, just stop for a minute. So I don't want to start rotating. So I've done that one. I'll put that one over there. I'll tell you about our open days. Right, here we go. Right, open days. Clarity Open Days 2022. Friday the 10th of June. It's a month away. And Saturday the 11th of June. It's when we all get together. Um, it's like a, it's the biggest thing on the clarity calendar, really. And we all get together and like a couple of hundred people all converge on Maidstone, Ditton. And, uh, and it's like a big festival, really, a big clarity festival. And the design team, many of the design team, there are makes and, make and takes, there are little workshops. Um, there'll be lots of demonstrations refreshments, um, giveaways, raffles. There's just so much going on. It's very, very good. And of course, we haven't been able to do it for two years because of because of COVID. So this is a really, it's a big thing for us. And, um, and we're hoping to celebrate it in a big way with you. So if you haven't got your tickets, get your tickets. Um, that'd be great. And, uh, and Paul, how are we doing? Are we doing all right? Are we enjoying ourselves? Let me put my other glasses on so I can actually see something. Fabulous demonstrations. Well, thank you very much, Andrea. It's very kind of you to say so. What I like about what I like about the craft alongs is I know that many of you are crafting along because I see your artwork on Clarity Worldwide afterwards. Um, I like that a lot. And I like that I'm not under pressure. You know, when it's done, it's done. I wish we could have clarity events in the USA. Well, Debbie Jones Campbell, watch this space. A great evening just watching. Thank you, Jackie. Right, so what we're going to do now is, ah, I wanted to show you something because that was very clean, isn't it? It's clean art. And we're going to come back to clean art. Are you a clean? Here's a question for you. Come on, tell us, give us your answer. Are you a clean crafter or do you like grunge? Do you like more arty, mixed media stuff? Or do you like both? Are you clean and tidy? Are you grungy, mixed media? Or do you like both? See, I'm a bit of both, really. I like, see, I like this a lot. I like this style a lot. And it's very less is more, very keep it simple, isn't it? It's, it's very pretty you see um but then i also right i also like this kind of art i really like this too i love both 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 oh, i love it i love it i love it i love it you see bit of both and that's it and that's what we have in common you know a bit of both and when we do the open days and when we do um when we do our uh, retreats 
that's it. We do a bit of both, don't we? And it's so fun when you see people like my darling friend, Linda Williams, who's Pergamano, master tutor, you know, numero uno. And um, uh, Pergamano, if there's any, that's like the most clean and tidy kind of artwork you could get, isn't it? it? And then and then she comes to the retreats and then she gets a jelly plate or a gel press. <laughs> the first time she did it, she spent more time wiping and washing and cleaning than she did doing the artwork. And then she bloody loved it. She loved it in the end. I want to show you this artwork. I did my blog today. I did this just to make a point. Um, because I wanted to, before we do this, I wanted to show you something. So this artwork here, did you, I don't know if you saw my blog, right? Um, but what it is, it was, it was the stencil. It's this piece. It's this piece of the stencil. You can see it easily. It's quite, looks like a fossil, right? And then what I did was I took a piece of black card. Let's just talk this one through because there's a step-by-step -step on barbaragrayblog.com. God knows how it goes back together again. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. But there are, it's an eight by eight piece of, no, there's an eight by eight piece of uh, black paper card, right? And then I took the texture paste, this stuff, and I dragged it through. Now, this is worth noting. You see the three spachtel, schablonier spachtel, it's a palette knife, right? All right. When you're doing big areas, you, it's good to have a, a large, you know, if I wanted to completely fill that middle bit with a texture pack. If you're doing smaller areas, then this is great. These little ones, you see, because it's exactly the right. Right. So what I did to do this, obviously, I had to put the texture paste. It became like a stamp. I used this like a stamp. So I took a, a, a mat and then I and then I imprinted. Right on a piece. Then I chopped it up. But then once I'd chopped it up, I tiled it. I tiled it. And the tiling, so you've got a four like a four by four out of an eight by eight. And then you tile it three by three like two and a half by one and a half, right? Cut and then cut again one, two. And so you tile it and you end up with these pieces. And then of course we've got our sticker words. And then I just put a meaningful word in and I used a five by five card blank. But you can see, and there's the bit, there's the bit that was there. That was, that was the bit that was there, somewhere around there anyway. And that's how it works. But you see now, my, I love that. That's my sort of artwork. And it, it is pretty, pretty, I mean, pretty simple. But when you, when you look at it, it's like, yeah, yeah. And it feels good too, because it's got texture, you know. And what I love about this is that it's using the exact same thing as we use here. So, so, so there we're using the same stencil. Now, humor me for a minute, right? Just humor me. This is what I call tiling. It's dead easy, isn't it? You do a big piece, chop it into four equal pieces, and then what a great way to make noteless. If you're making to sell, easy. Now, humor me for a minute. And I want to show you, this is tiling again, but now we're back to clean and tidy. So here, in this lovely? Same thing, look. So you've got your designer papers, or actually I've used my petite topper. Look, see? So you take a petite topper like that. These are lovely cards, right? You stamp into an area and then you cut back. On its own, With it's so strange this is, if you, if you do this and then you leave it in one piece, it doesn't, it's boring. That's the word. Even though the background paper that I designed is very pretty, it's too big and they get lost. As soon as you tile it and then you add the pieces around the outside, it changes it. It's transformational. Here's another one. You see? And, and all the time I'm using Annie's stamps. Look. See, there's the flyaway boy. There's the little girl. There's the little girl with the butter. There's a butterfly girl, right? Do you see? And look, there's you hung the moon. And there, and and I love that. 
And again, it's tiled. I just chopped it, but then I decided not to use all of it. You don't have to use all the pieces. I could leave that one out. I could leave that one out. I could leave that one out and put a sticker in there. I could put a sticker. See what I mean? You don't have to always use everything. You can make little details, look, in the gaps, put little dots, get arty. But the point I'm making is that the tiling technique that I used with this stencil and the texture paste is exactly the same tiling technique that you can use in a very clean and tidy fashion using the petite toppers or designer paper. It's all done for you. Very simple, very simple. And it doesn't matter that when you chop up, you can chop the artwork in, in half and tile it and it still looks really, really cool. Okay, so I just wanted to flag that one up. And then I thought it'd be nice to, um, to do that last, that last card. Come on, still got half an hour. You up for it? So what do we need? Well, if you want, you can use the, the outer one, can't you? You can use this one, if that's the one you've got in front of you. I'm going to show you, though, I'm going to showcase a few more of our, our other stencils. Let me just put this to one side. Cole, we've got it all going on here. <laughs> Look, I tell you what, I've been, I've been really amazed at how much stencil art I've got lying around. Isn't that lovely? That, this is a stencil I designed. Um, I, I use it on my pottery. Really, I love that one. I like that. It's very fine. It's a, it's a really lovely stencil to use. Really lovely. You know what? While we're here, I'm going to show you these as well. Because these are the other block stencils. These are the ones um, that this is part of. See, it's the same kind of style, isn't it? Look, see? It's a heart. These are lovely. Let me show you these. Um, let's see if I can show you. There you go. That's a beautiful one. That one. And I've got the heart. I've used these so many times now. It's got a circle one. Isn't that lovely? And the triangle. The hearty triangle. Beautiful bunting that would make. What a celebration bunting that would make. Right? So these are lovely stencils. And then these are prints. So these are the gel press prints that I've done using the stencils. I love these. See, I could spend, I could retire and just spend the rest of my life doing this. Look at that one. I think they're gorgeous. I don't, I don't, I don't want to cut it up. I don't want to use it. I just want to stare at it. I think that's the thing, isn't it? Sometimes you don't always have to chop everything up. No, that's nice. I've got a little stash, see? <laughs> and that's what I do. I just keep them. And I, and I, I get a real buzz out of them. Do you, do you know what I mean? And maybe one day. See, this is a lovely tile, tiled work. But I can tell you now, I'm never, ever, 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 ever going to cut that one up. That actually would make a beautiful paper in a, in a designer pad, I think. Mm. Thoughts, thoughts. Okay, so let's have a look. Stencils. These are the stencils that we were talking about. And that was the stencil that I'm going to go to. And I want to show you now, we really want to, it's about ink control with the brush. And let's just say less is more. You can always add it, but you can't take it away. And that's the truth of it, isn't it? So that's less is more. And I want to show you some other really, really, like if you like, if you're into landscapes and you want to use the landscapey part of that new stuff, let me show you these stencils. So that's probably one of our most popular ones. That one, then we've got that one. There's a set of these, I think, Paul, isn't there? We've got the bull rushes one for then we've got the winter scene one. That's lovely. See, so these are real landscapey type. Then we've got stencils, these are very popular in the States. Um they're, they're words. They're, these are great. Look, Fly Where the Dream Takes You. This is artwork by our friend Mel Turner. 
birds of a feather flock together, try out your wings. It's time to spread your wings and fly. These are beautiful stencils, seven by sevens. And then, of course, we've got this type of stencil, arty, grungy, real texture stencils. These are Sam's. Nice. Brilliant for pottery. Brilliant for pottery, those are. So you see, we've got such a vast library of stencils, but we really don't shout about them that much, which is crazy. So let's get started with this simple, simple, simple set. It's a good price as well on these. I think they're only about 12 quid for the four. And the other thing, of course, is you get the positive and the negative. So when you open this up, you get your arch, your square, your oval, and your circle, but you also get your arch, your square, your oval, and your circle. So it's great. Do you know what? You know, we were talking about embedders. I don't know if, you, if embedders is new to you. Um, oh, see, I've done something in the, in the stamp club to show you the embedders. But we do sets of embedders, and this is a great embedder set. <laughs> it's, a, it's a way of creating a faux relief print. It looks like a, a printing press piece. Yeah, we ought to do another craft along where I'll show you. Maybe if we get time, I'll show you that in a minute. Right, let's do this one thing at a time. I'm going to use this one. This is a seven by seven. And believe it or not, so is the stencil card. So we'll take another piece of stencil card. We'll trim it back afterwards. It's just a lot easier to work on a piece of card that's the same size as the stencil. There you go. Right. Now we're going to make a, let's call it a hinge. Actually, I need my other glasses on. Let's have a look. Okay. Right. And we'll be done by nine. We've got curry night tonight. Woohoo! Curry in a movie. <laughs> curry in a movie. So it's only a, I defrosted one out of the freezer from Marks and Spencer's. They do the best curry, Marks and Spencer. So, so that's what we're having. I defrosted it. I know. <laughs> Dave got some poppadoms. I tell you what, we know how to live, don't we, Dave? <laughs> he said, you better be in by nine o'clock. I will be in by nine o'clock, Dave. Get the chapatis ready. <laughs> right, so we've got that ready. Okay. And then what do we need next? We need another brush. See, this blue is very turquoisey, very seabed, isn't it? Don't do that one. We need a darker, we need a darker, plainer, that'll do. That's a nice, more muted blue. I want that blue. Okay, and that's why I'm using that ink pad. Right, a bit of copy paper, just to check what we're doing. Distress ink, let's have a look. That'll do. Right. You can always add it, but you can't take it away. So now let me have a think for a minute. Stop larking about, Graham. Let's have a think. Right. First of all, yes. What we're going to do is just stay on this side. Right. Let's have a let's have a closer look at it. And let's just make a decision. Right. We're going to just stay on this side. And in fact, we're not even coming around this side. We'll do that afterwards if we feel we need to. We'll stick to this side, okay? That's it. Very, very gently. We're going to start up here because you can always, look, let's go on this side. All right, and we've made a hinge so we can monitor what we're doing. All right, here we go. So we'll just sweep through. And we'll just keep going on that side. Just round here. Right, there we go. Gently does it. So we want to make it look like a globe, like a like a moon, actually. Let's have a look. Is it, am I too far away? It's coming a bit closer so you can see it better. There we are. Right, so I see because we've got a hinge bracket, I can lift that up and I can see what do I think? No, I think I need a bit more. Right, so but less is more, and also, not just that, you can always add it, 
but you can't take it away. So sweep, 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 sweep. Now let's have a look, see what we're doing. Let's have a look on this camera, on this camera and see where we're at. Right, so you can see now it's starting to look like a kind of an eclipse, isn't it? It's what I'm after. Really nice. So you can see I'm just sweeping in the same place, up that way all the time like that, right? Flick, flick, flick. Right, keep that side clear, completely clear over here. Can always add it as long as we leave the hinge in place. Shouldn't be a problem though, because it's about it's just bang in the middle, really. Right, now once I've done that, let me have a think for a minute. So now the next thing we want to do, I think, is add, um, let's add the hill maybe. I think we could build it up. Should we put a little tiny bit up here? Just a tiny bit, so we're at both sides. Let's do a little bit up here. We'll leave this and this empty. So let's have a look. Let's have a look if we do the top. Yeah, here we go. So we've done a tiny bit at the top. The mind tells you that the two bits are where they, even if there's no ink there, the mind tells you there is ink. Look, I'll show you. We we'll do that. Even though there is no ink there, your eye tells you there is. And there may be just a tiny flash of blue. Maybe we did go over that area, but there you go. Okay, so you stay in that area and that area, that area there and that area there. Right, so now we've done that. Now let's have a think. Think, Gray, think, what next? Okay, I, I think what I want to do is take my, my spot on sponge now and I just want to sweep through. Let's sweep through here now and I'll sweep through up there as well. I think I'll do that just to get that nice edge like that. All right, so we've got that going on. See, any ink I do now, any ink, I can't, once I put these black characters in, once I put Annie and Dorothy in, I can't go back on with the brush because it will, look, I'll tell you what happens. See how I've dragged the black ink because I was, too impatient. So we'll do that right at the end. There we are. Now, what do I, I need to go back to this stencil. Let me just find, we're nearly done though. We're nearly done. We're two minutes away from being completed here. I just need that part. Oh, here it is. Silly me. Right. I need, let me just check something. Did I use this part? No. I use this part, so I need to clean it. Water, -hee. water will do the job. That's the part I use, look, I think. There you go, it's there, see? You use any bit you want. Just a bit of water, damp cloth, that'll get rid of the ink. Okay, right, so now, I want to make sure, so I've got my stamp ready and my stamp's going to go there. So now I need to decide where I'm putting my, my hill, do you see? So I'm going to, I'm going to put my stamp down, just do your composition. Think about where you want to place everything. I mean, I've already done it once, so it's a piece of cake for me, but the, uh, the, the, the point I'm making is, that you put your put your stamps down and this this is how I did it. Look, I'll show you. Before I mounted it, I did it like this. I put that in. This is exactly what I did to to make the art. I did this like so, and I decided where I wanted the girl to sit, where I wanted the words to be, how I wanted her to like there, right. So it was all laid up exactly as I wanted it. And then I took the mount, right? And I put, and I picked up that stamp. And then I picked up this stamp and I'd already, and I decided then exactly where it was going. Okay. So I know where it's all going to be. And then I'm going to take my, my, my land. Yeah, take my land and then I'm going to cover up my sky because it's the it's 
the depth is in the bottom half, not in the top half, you see? So now I'm going to go like that, decide whereabouts. Let's just bear with me while I think this through. Right, that's it. So now I'm going to pop that there. I know exactly where it's going to go. That's fine. Right, so I'll lift that away. And then if I want to, I can tape this into place. If you feel you, you need to tape it, then by all means, do. Right? Just pop that in there like that. Pop that in there like that. So now you haven't got to think about it. It's in place. So we're using the same hill part of the other five-part stencil um, to create a very subtle look. It's got to be subtle, though. Right? And now we're going to come in from the side here. Come in from this side like that. And it's all about lifting, see? Because if you lift, then you don't, because we're putting the, the hill in, we're gonna, but we're going to leave it light where Annie's on the ladder. There. So that's like that. And that's like that. And then just slightly through there. Right, don't want it too dark though. I'm making this a lot darker than I did the first time around. But you know what? In for a penny. So now what I've got, now I've done that, let's lift this off and see what we've got. Nice. Okay, so we've got our, uh, we've got that in place. Now we can take this away. Let's have a look. So now we've got our, so you know you could make oceans as well, don't you? Look. Turn it around the other way and you've got a, a wave, you've got a boat, you could put a boat in. Right, but we're on a hill. So now let's take Annie and let's place her right there with Dorothy. That's where she's going. Or should we put the, let's put you hung the moon in first. And then, because I know that, I don't know if you're doing this. I don't know if you're stamping this with me, but let's see what we've got. So you hung the moon, that's in place. Nice. That'll do. Right, you hung the moon. Now comes the pair with the moon. And we'll just make sure that that's in place too. Nice. See, and if you ever do this and you miss a little bit with a stamp, then that's what your micron pens are so useful for. You just add a little bit. I, I'm happy with that, though. But if I, if I was missing a little tiny bit, then I would take my micron pen and I'll just add it, you know. Right, so now I've got that. Now, tree time. So we're going to go back to the trees. But this time, I'm going to use this long, long tree. This one. Great. Okay, and what I want to do is add that tree so that it's inside and outside. So I've got my ink up my tree. Here we go. And then we're going to add. Have you had supper or are you going to have a late night treat as well? There, beautiful. Isn't that lovely? And what we'll do now we've done that, we need this piece, which was this piece here. Was it? I can't remember now. Uh, let me have a think. That bit was that bit there. So that bit was that bit there. There you go. Bingo. So I've got my mask like that. Yeah. And then I'm going to take my tree again. Look. So what I want to do now is put the trees in the background. Okay. Right, they need to be in the background. So I'm going to lay the artwork, lay the mask down like that. And we're going to go ink, blot, plot. Ink, because it needs to be more faded because it's further away. Blot. Further away, so we'll cut it back a little bit. Plot. There you go. Further away, so it's more faded. See? And we'll go again. Ink. Make sure your mask's in the right place. Ink. Blot. Oh, hang on, my finger's in the wrong place. 
Right, start again. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. This makes it easier than having to try and hold it at the same time as fill with a stamp. Right, ink, blot, plot. Ink, blot, do a little tiny one, plot. And I think we're probably edging in on Dorothy there. That's probably good enough. Do I want to put another little tiny bit in there? Yeah, I do. There you go. All righty. See? That's lovely, isn't it? And then the only thing that I would still add where I feel, right, is that she is sort of, it's a bit precarious there. She's not grounded, you see. So my thoughts on that are, it's quite easy. We're just going to take this and we're going to put a bit of a grounding down so we can, that's easy enough. There you go. You don't need much, but let's just put a little bit of, just a sweep of that brush. That's all we need. Just a sweep of the, now I'm not sure about this because it's round the other way this time. See on the last one, there was a gap, see? So it, it kind of worked better. But this time, it'll be all right though. It'll work. Well, I'll soon tell you if it worked or not. You'll soon see, won't you? Right, let's do this again. Okay, I might have to make that leg a bit longer on the, <laughs> on the ladder. <laughs> let's have a look. Right. I reckon this would be quite good. There you are. Let's have a look. Yeah, nice. Makes leg on ladder slightly longer so that it is grounded and no one will ever know. There you go. And then along here, we'll add a little bit of the picket fences. There you go. Nice. That'll do. Works. And that's how it works, you see. And then you trim it back. And that's how you get a lovely landscape. But what I love is the fact that you can use just a simple globe, just the simplest shapes to get a really nice, a really nice background. And then as far as the edging goes, just if you're new to the fold, um, the way that I get that black around the edge once I've trimmed it, it's very easy. Just Take a, a Sharpie pen and drag it down. That's it. It's as easy as that. Okay. So there you go. We've had a really, a really, uh, a really productive creative session, haven't we? I hope that you enjoyed that. I tell you what, I want to do. A couple of things before we before we call it a day. I, I just want. Also, if you're using a permanent ink pad as well, let me just show you this. If you're using a permanent ink pad, I tell you what gets rid of that like properly easily. If you want to clean it, look, I'll show you. I mean, the dye based stuff that comes off obviously with um, dye based inks, they they come off with water. But if you're using a solvent based ink or an archival or a permanent ink, then all you need is a little tiny bit of this and it comes off, look, just sweeps straight off. Okay, if you're wondering how to clean your um, stencils that's that's the gear again i get it in from ranger right so that's that and uh and i think i wanted to i wanted to let me just let me just check here let's look at the three pieces of artwork that we've done right so you know what where we where we we've come and then once i've done that i want to just show you something quite quite formidable really Right, so there you go. Where's the one that we just did together? That one. That's pretty cool. And then we did that one, didn't we? We did the, the tree. Oh, and we did the ginkgo. Really nice. Came out lovely. I don't know. Do I have a favourite? Mm, no, not really. I like them all. I love them all. Don't you? 
I think I like the ginkgo. But there you go. I love that as well. <laughs> See what I wanted to show you, you know, because we do have these clubs, craft clubs, and we're probably the oldest craft club in the country. And it started out as a stamp club, and then it went to stamps and stencils, and then it went to stamps and stencils and groovy, and then it went to stamps and stencils and groovy. So there are four different products, four different craft clubs. I mean, it's a really, really great, um, it's a great club. And when you see what you get, it's quite phenomenal. I was looking at the stencil clubs because when you, when you join, let me just show you one example of um, a, a concertina, right? And then let me show you. So you see, you this is one that t teaches you how to use acrylic paint. So you've got a double project, see? And it, it opens up and you get photographs and it shows you exactly how it works, shows you what you need. And then there is a different one. See, there's a second one, there's a canvas and how you, how you use acrylic paint and how you use texture paste and so it's a real learning kind of club it's very educational when you join for 12 months you get um you get not only do you get a what's fascinating is you not only get um the, you get the stencil as well as the project but i wanted to just show you when i started looking right just let me show you 20 21 look at this 22 these some of these stencils are absolutely glorious so what i'm saying is you not only get a double project like that hair is pretty cool look right you not only get a double project what's the other one like wow canvas see but you also get instructions so you're building up a phenomenal collection a library and you get the i love that one i love that one look and then you want to know how to do it see alcohol ink that is annie ah oh, annie this is an annie design uh, there she is look totally her stencil designs reflect her young whimsy free spirit beautiful so when you join the club, you not only get a phenomenal stencil, look, with two parts, but then you also get all the, all the instruction. So, I mean, there's another one I love. Oh, I love the ones with trees, look. And this one, I show you how to do it, how to get a positive and a negative, see? How to get, how to make the background the feature. And then how to make the stencil the stamp. So my point being, you know, I think it's like, how much is it, Paul? Six pound a month or something. Six pounds a month. And then you get one of these every month. Plus you get discount on anything you buy. Plus you get the stencil, you know. I don't know. I think that's quite fantastic, really. See, this is cool. This one shows you how to make a circle out of a, out of a rectangle. So the tricks and tips and the education and the way that they work and the designs, I, I, I'm, quite, I'm quite staggered. Look, look at this, right? Let me show you how many months and years we've been going, how much you know, how much of a library. And these, all these double projects include, plus the stencils, they're all available online, you know. We've got a complete section on the website. If you don't want to join the club and you don't want 10% off and you don't want a new stencil every month, right, you can still get all these just by going on claritystamp.com and go into the um, past projects and they're all there and at a great price. Six pound a month, there you go. Six pound a month, including the postage. I think if you're in the States or if you're abroad, it's a little bit more, but we'll, you know, that's, it still costs us more. <laughs> it costs us more to get it to you than we actually 
um, charge you. There you go. But we're working on it. <laughs> we're working on a solution, aren't we, Gracie? So there you go. I wanted to show you what's available. You know, the stencils, we don't often... We, we, we don't often shine a light on them. We're always looking at groovy and we're looking at parchment and we're looking at stamps. And sometimes, you know, it's right in front of you. The best things are right in front of you. But I think I've come to the end of this craft along. So I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you have a look at the website, have a look at our vast selection of stencils. They are quite magnificent. Um, yeah, and they are superb. They're a very good quality as well. They're a thick mylar. They're not flimsy. And you'll find that when you use them, like the one in the club this month is really nice. And it's a swirly one. And, um, and you know, it's very robust. And it's designed in such a way that it doesn't move. When you go over it with a brush, it's, it's designed... You know, it's constructed, if you like, in such a way, apart from being a really thick mylar, um, it, it doesn't move when you're, when, you're, when you're dragging paste through it or something like that. Very, very good. Have a look at them. Anyway, I hope that that sheds a light or shines a light on what, what that free stencil was or that stencil that we sent you was. It's obviously still available online, um, that five-part block stencil, as it's called. And, uh, and I hope that you enjoyed yourselves. And Paul, thank you so much for all your work too. And, uh, and have a fabulous weekend. I don't think I've forgotten anything. Think about the open days. Think about the retreats. Think about the clubs. And, uh, and just be creative. Stencils are the way to go. Lots of love. Bye-bye now. I'm coming in.